All right, welcome back to Let's Play Vim Tutor. And in this video, we're going to continue on with lesson four. So let's scroll on down to lesson 4.1 here. Uh, let me get into the frame. There we go. So lesson 4.1, cursor location and file status. Type control G to show your location in the file and the file status. Type G, uppercase G, to move to a line in the file. Okay, so there's a note, read this entire lesson before executing any of these steps. So the reason for that is because we're going to be jumping around in the file and for us to kind of get back to this location, um, it's good for us to kind of internalize all this before we start jumping around. So the first step is to hold down the control key and press G. We call this control G. A message will appear at the bottom of the page with the file name and the position of the file. So let's go ahead and move the cursor up a little bit. And if we hit control G, you can see here that there's uh, 967 total lines. Actually, you can also see that it's we're on line 490 out of 967. And actually, if you look at the left, I have relative numbering turned on in Vim. And you can see that we're, a lot, we're around line 490, 500. Okay, great. So we know kind of roughly where we are in the file. We'll keep that in mind. So note, you may see the cursor position in the lower right corner of the screen. This happens when the ruler option is set. So in this case, we're seeing this in the lower right, and the uh, that's because the option is set. So step two is press uppercase G to moves, uh, move you to the bottom of the file, GG, lowercase, to move you to the top. Um, so let's continue to read through this, and then we'll do this. Step three is type the number of the line you were on and then G. This will return you to the line you were on when you first press control G. And then if you feel confident to do this, execute steps one through three. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and just move to the top and the bottom of the file. So the bottom of the file is if we hit shift G, that takes us to the bottom. If we hit GG twice, lowercase, that takes us to the top. Bottom, top, bottom, top. So that's usually pretty useful when you're moving around files. If we want to go to a specific line, so remember we were around line 490. If we type in 490 uppercase G, it's it's telling Vim to, okay, line, number, 490 in this case, go there. So uppercase G is kind of the mnemonic for go to that line. Um, I'm not really sure what good mnemonics exist for uppercase G for the bottom of the file and, and two G's for the top of the file. Those are things that you kind of use often enough where you just kind of get used to them and you don't really need to have a mnemonic to memorize them. But it is helpful to say like, if you want to get to line 300, three, uh, or let's say, yeah, 300 G, um, or sorry, maybe I should say 300 G. So we're on line 300, as you can tell there, 200. Um, we'll go back to 490. So we're back at 490. And that's pretty much all we need to learn in this lesson here. So it's just helpful, especially if you're moving around in a big file uh, and you kind of are aware of the line numbers, it's helpful to jump around. So we'll move with, with that, we'll move on to lesson 4.2. So lesson 4.2 is a search command. So type slash followed by a phrase to search for that phrase. Okay, so in normal mode, again, if we press escape, we enter into normal mode. You can tell actually the bottom left of this uh, of this file in Vim here tells you what mode you're in. So for instance, if I press I, notice how that turns into insert mode. I'm going to go back into normal mode. Uh, so in normal mode, type the slash character. Notice that it and the cursor appear at the bottom of the screen as with the colon command. So remember when we typed colon, if we want to quit out of the file or write and quit or anything like that, we would hit this colon and then there would be text on the bottom of the screen that would appear as we type it. Likewise, if we hit the slash key, you'll see that the cursor is now at the bottom and we can start to enter text, in this case text that we, we want to search for in this file. So step two is now type the word E-R-R-R-O-O-R and then enter. So this is the word you want to search for. So let's go ahead and do that. E-R-R-R-O-O-R. -R -R -O -O -R. So the only place it happens to be in this file is this location. So let's hit enter. Uh, it, well, sorry, not in this location, but in this lesson. So this is the word you want to search for. Step three, to search for the same phrase again, simply type N. So the mnemonic here is N is next. So we can say that if we want to find the next occurrence of this particular string, we can type N. That jumps the cursor you can see to the next occurrence. And if we hit N again, it goes to the next one. If we hit N again, it'll take us to the initial occurrence of that word that we first uh, stumbled upon. So that's for the lowercase N. 
to search for the same phrase in the opposite direction, we can type capital N. So forward search is N, lowercase. Backward search is uppercase N. It searches backwards. Okay, so let's get back there. So step four is to search for a phrase in the backward direction, use question mark instead of slash. So basically, if you start to search for a word and instead of um, if you want to do a backward search instead of a forward search by default, then you can start that with a question mark as opposed to a slash. That's what that's saying. And to go back where you came from, press control O. So if you're searching, if you're going through, let's say we're on this third occurrence here, if we press control O, uh, control O, that will take us to the uh, control shift O, I should say, that will take us back to the first occurrence of the word that we're, um, that we wanted to find. So let's see, so let me exit back out of that. Uh, you'll see here that this word is highlighted. One thing that you can do to unhighlight the word if you don't want that to be highlighted anymore is to hit shift colon, N-O-H, that's for, I guess, no highlight. Um, so no, and then H is highlight. So if I hit enter there, that'll remove the highlight. So instead of highlighting the word I'm looking for, now there's no highlight, it's kind of just not there, it's not distracting. Uh, let's see, okay, so uh, that error, uh, so that's just an arrow key that's not really very useful. So note, when the search reaches the end of the file, it will continue at the start unless the wrap scan option has been reset. Okay, good to know. So we'll move on then to lesson 4.3. Let's just press J to get down there. So lesson 4.3 is matching parentheses search. So this is really useful if you're, uh, let's say you're writing a function prototype and you're starting to type the arguments in the function and you want to figure out where the matching parenthesis is, uh, this will show you where the corresponding parenthesis of that function is uh, is located. So it's, it's very useful. Uh, so type percent to find a matching brace. So a matching parenthesis or a square bracket or a curly brace. So place the cursor on any of the opening parentheses, square bracket, or curly brace in the line below marked with an arrow. Okay, let's do that. So we'll go back up to this arrow and let's let's put it uh, let's put it right. Let's see. Let's put it right here. So now type the percent sign. Okay, so shift five types the percent, and that first open parenthesis, the matching parenthesis, is where the cursor is currently blinking. That's the matching parenthesis of the one that we were on. Okay, so this is, it says in uh, step three, the cursor will move to the matching parenthesis or bracket. So type, parent, type the percent sign to move the cursor to the other matching bracket. So we can just keep doing that. That'll just go between the parentheses in this case. Let's move to the, uh, let's move to this bracket here. If we type in parentheses, that'll take us to the corresponding square brace. So it says move the cursor to another parenthesis square bracket or a curly brace and see what percent sign does. So we can do that with uh, also the curly brace that finds the matching parenthesis there. So that's kind of the, um, you know, kind of the key result of pressing the percent sign. So note, this is very useful in debugging a program with unmatched parentheses. So indeed, if, you, if you're looking for, um, you know, a function that you're writing or something that you're starting parentheses on and you want to make sure that it has a matching parenthesis, if you press that, that, uh, percent sign, it can take you to the matching parenthesis. If there isn't one, then you can find that out pretty quickly using this uh, using this trick. Okay, so that's quite useful. Let's keep scrolling down. On to listen 4.4, the substitute command. So the substitute command, type colon s slash old slash new slash g to substitute new for old. So this is kind of like a search and replace. So move the cursor to the line below marked with an arrow. I think we'll probably see this better by actually stepping through an example. So let's go ahead and move our cursor there. So type in colon s the uh, colon s slash the slash the and then enter. So colon s slash t h e e and then the and then we'll press enter. And so what this is going to do, this command only changes the first occurrence of the word the. So let me just undo that so we can see that. So see how that first occurrence in this line with the arrow changed back from the to the? We made that change by doing, again, colon s slash. We want to change the first occurrence of t-h-e-e -E to the, right? So if we do that, Keep an eye on that. That will change the first occurrence in this line to the instead of T-H-E-E. Okay, fine. So now step three says, now type 
colon s slash the slash the slash g. What does the g do? Adding the g flag means to substitute globally in the line. Change all occurrences of T-H-E-E -E in the line. So let's undo that just to see how this works. Um, so what I'm going to do is colon s, so search. You can think of that mnemonic there, s is search. Slash, what are we searching for? We're slashing for this thing. And then we're going to delimit with another slash to tell Vim, okay, I'm searching for T-H-E-E. -E. I want to search and replace that replace it with the word the, and we'll use another slash to delimit. I want to replace that globally in the line that we're in. So I'm gonna add that G in there. And so keep an eye on the three highlighted T-H-E-E's in this line, I'm gonna press enter, they've all turned to does. So that's kind of handy if you have multiple occurrences of a word that you wanna change. Uh, it's, a, it's a quick way to do it. Step four, to change every occurrence of a character string between two lines, type so let's see, so we have colon, hash, comma, hash, s, old, new, g. So hashes um, are just kind of place fillers. They're really just place fillers, in this case, for the line numbers. So hash, the start hash and ending hash are the line numbers of the range of lines where the substitution is to be done. Likewise, we can also type uh, colon percent s, uh, where you know, the old and the new and G global replace for the old to replace new globally on the line to change every occurrence in the whole file. Where is the whole file coming from? That's the percent sign. So before, if we wanted to just change globally, let me just undo this again. Globally in the line, we say S search for T-H-E-E, -E, the G, that's global in the line. If we want to say instead now replace all of the occurrences of T-H-E-E -E in the file to the, so let's do that, let's add the percent sign. So if we do that, notice that all of these things, all of these T-H-E-E's will now change to the, let's go ahead and do that. They've all changed to the, let's just undo that. So let's see, what else do we have? And we also have another flag, so C, G-C. So if we have the last one here uh, on this line, to find every occurrence in the whole file with a prompt whether or not to substitute or not, you can type in GC instead of just G. So the GC is kind of like how you would see in Sublime Text or any other editor where it will ask you whether or not you actually want to replace that occurrence of the word. Um, if you don't have that C delimiter, it will say, okay, I'm just going to replace everything regardless. Uh, anything that matches this expression, I will replace. The C will prompt you, are you sure you want to replace this instance? Are you sure you want to replace this, replace this instance? And so on. So pretty handy. Uh, again, just think about how many times you use such a pattern in your own editing in Sublime Text or Word or whatever you're using to edit text. So these are pretty useful things to know. So let's proceed that on to the summary. So lesson four summary. So control G displays your location in the file and the file status. Uh, uppercase G moves to the end of the file. If you prefix that with a number, that will take you to whatever line you want. So we saw line 490, 490 uppercase G took us to the line in the file that was line 490. GG, lowercase, moves you to the top of the file. Uh, item two. If we want to, uh, we can type a slash followed by the phrase that we want to search for forward in the file. So a forward search, again, this is a pretty common pattern in Sublime Text or anything like that. If you want to search forward, you type, you, you start typing a slash and then the word you're looking for. Likewise, if you want to initiate a backward search, you type in question mark followed by whatever word you're looking for in the file. And then after search, you can type lowercase n to find the next occurrence of that word or uppercase n to go in the opposite direction. So if you start with a forward search using a forward slash, if you type in n, that will move forward. Likewise, if you start with a backward search with a question mark, if you type in lowercase n, that will move backwards and vice versa for which, whichever, um, whichever one you start with. Uh, let's see, so typing the percent sign while the cursor is on a parenthesis will go to its matching corresponding brace. Again, this is helpful for debugging purposes if you're uh, curious if you have all of your parentheses. And then item four, to substitute new for the first old in a line, you can type in colon s slash old slash new. So colon s is to search, slash old is um, what you're searching for, slash new is what you want to replace it with. Or, And then the next one is if you want to substitute all of the uh, items in a file, sorry, in, in the line, rather. Same pattern, only you now have slash G. If you want to do something between certain lines, you can do that. 
if you want to do it in the whole file, you add the percent sign. And if you want to uh, do this in the whole file and also be uh, asked whether or not you want to actually replace whatever you're replacing, then you can add the C uh, command at the end there. So these things are um, practice makes perfect. So go ahead and just practice to your heart's content until you've kind of got a good flow. Uh, these things are maybe a little bit counterintuitive or a little bit uncomfortable at first. That's normal. That's natural. Uh, over time, the hope is that, you know, after a couple weeks of dealing with Vim and, and using it as your main editor, you'll find that using anything else might be cumbersome. So the idea is hopefully this will be a little bit cumbersome at the get-go, which learning anything new tends to be. But as you become more proficient, hopefully you will become more effective and productive. Okay, then uh, I think this ends the video here at lesson four. So uh, we're going to continue on next time in lesson five. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below in this video and have a great day.